And we are going to discuss physical development in childhood and adolescence. As you can see from our slides, when a child is born, the child is newly born, and we term the child new needs. Recording in progress. There are several things that occur in the life of the child. But then we have major activities that occur when they are new needs. They feed more, they sleep more, they cry more. Why? Because they are trying to adjust to the environment. They equally have motor development, where we see movement of their parts, bodies, hands, and the rest. They also develop purposive behaviors, where they are able to coordinate their sensory information and muscular activities. They are able to execute specific actions. So when the child is seeing something that's colorful, the child can stretch the arm and pick it or hold it, which is a skill. Or the sensory information the child has used as basis. We have the gross motor activity, where they use big body parts of themselves to engage in activities. One of them is walking, swimming, kicking, throwing, jumping, and dancing. We have fine motor activity. The fine motor activity occurs when the child uses the fingernails or the fingers as basis to do some things. They use the fingers to work. Use the fingers to work. That makes it fine. So anytime I told you use a portion of your body, which is so less to act, we term that one fine motor skill. Fine motor skill. Aside that, the child is having something that we call milestone. And the milestone is an expected development that you must see in the child. Every child is expected to be of, uh, to observe in that particular tangent. One of them is they need to be able to hold on their head in a prostrate fashion. Look at something and move with it. Look at something and move with it. Again, they should be able to begin to sit at a particular period in time, especially the three to six months. At the tenth month, the child should be able to stand and equally make moves. Some children are able to walk before one year. So at the 10th month, some are able to walk, others are able to stand, others are, are still crawling, individual difference. Individual difference. But we should have physiological adjustment in them. And when we say physiological adjustment, there is one the child is able to withstand the environmental factors and changes that occur. In as much as they were able to do it was in the amniotic sac or the uterus, they still have the ability to do that when they are born. So the child should be able to do that. And their ability to do that, it regulates their oxygen taking. It's able to regulate what they eat in terms of It's able to regulate their temperature and so on and so forth. Please, those of us who join with audio, quickly, quickly mute your mic. Sharifa, you are one. I'm muting you. If you don't, I will delete you. If you know you join with an audio, I beg of you, mute it and let us have a conducive environment. And let us have a conducive environment, please. We have early childhood or the preschool year in between the ages of two to six. This one correlates with PJ's pre-operational stage. The preschool year or early childhood correlates with PJ's pre-operational stage. At this stage, the child is supposed to start schooling at the early, early grades. And the child should be able to work, to develop. They engage in several things or several activities as they age on. Usually at the age two, they are more, much more with the gross motor skills. But when they are moving towards the age of three, four, five, to six, they are able to what? To refine it and use their smaller body parts to act, especially their fingers. What do we need to do? We need to assist the preschool child motor development. So they should exercise. Don't put the child in the classroom alone. You let the child go out there and exercise the body in order to build the muscles. And you should try to avoid comparing children with one another since 
even twins of the same mother, the same egg, identical and not the same when it comes to their development. So when you see that one child is good than the other, it doesn't mean every child should be like the other child. No, for comparison. And you need to provide the necessary resources and materials for the total and the full growth of the child. You should also realize that success in one activity does not necessarily mean that they will succeed in another activity because they may have the edge to succeed in that angle, but not the other, but not the other. Any question? 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 If you have questions, you raise your hand. I'll call upon you to ask, and we'll continue with that. If you have a question, you raise your hand. I'll call upon you to ask. They will go with it. All right. They have no questions. Let's continue. So far, we have only 15. Now, we have only nine on board. We have the later or middle childhood stage between 7 and 12 years, which correlates with the concrete operational stage of PG. The child has developed physically, but the growth and development here becomes slow. Girls growing faster than boys at this stage of the same age. But then the growth and development here depends on the kind of food that you provide to the child. If the child eats well, we may see good things happening. If they don't eat well, we may see poor things happening. Note that. And there's also organic need for strenuous physical activity. When they go to school, even the fattest of all, We'll be playing and jumping, bicycling, and the rest. We have the adolescence. Adolescence is very particular. The golden moment in any individual's life. There are several things that occur in the life of the adolescent boy or girl. Sometimes there may be deformities in their system, or there may be inconsistencies or non-uniformity, which we term as asynchronous. So the child may think that that portion of the body that is not big or which is bigger than what they expect, they'll be, think, they'll be thinking that it is bad or it's a full growth, it's normal. Yeah. What do you need to do as a teacher? As a teacher, you need to understand the child the way they are, how the human body is, so that you can guide them in the room, the body mm -hmm. they and use it differently according yeah, to how oh, this is. Oh, yeah, yeah. Please, mm -hmm. I don't, yeah, those who yeah, do making noise. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. If you're able to simplify, it's always good. And mm -hmm. the it's, a, it's the same as the lecture. Mm -hmm. Bondo Mohammed, no, your head like stone. You are making noise. Mm -hmm. Bondo Mohammed, can you hear me? Bondo Mohammed, can you hear me? You are making noise. I hear that. I don't want that. Once I talk, you don't talk. You are distracting the class. I hate it. Whoever that talks again, I will delete you. And I will sanction you when we meet on Wednesday. Don't let us be doing that. You should make the class conducive for those who are serious to benefit. Please, this is my last plea. This is my last plea. The next noise, I will delete you and punish you on top of that. So sometimes the girls may feel that their breasts are not developing the way they want because they see one to be bigger than the other. It is normal. Some will be yearning for big buttocks, but that is how they are. It is normal. You need to educate them. If you don't, they may be what? Misled by their colleagues who might not know much about the human parts and how they grow. 
same applies to the boys. They also see that their genitalia is too small and they may wish for a bigger one. It is normal. Let them appreciate it. You may be teaching and they are quiet in class. And the quietness does not mean that they don't like you, they like you. But it appears to them there's something wrong. It appears to them there's something wrong, but they don't have any clue to what is happening to them. So what we can do is that we get close to them and ask them what is going on in their minds so that we can guide them best and let them develop and develop very good. So as a teacher, as you understand the physical development of the child, you should be able to know the kind of task the child must do. You don't expect the child who is having crippleness or having a disability to be jumping while the two legs cannot stand. It's not done. And at this stage, the better you let them master the muscles of which they can hold pen when they are early childhood. And when we get to the early, uh, what do you call it, the middle childhood and adolescence, but then they might have got acquired the necessary skill in using their hands in doing things that they want. So don't engage your learners in activities that are beyond their level of maturity. If you engage them in the activities that are beyond their level of maturity, they will become frustrated and they will drop out. That thing will be light. Also, don't give them things that are less than what they know. If you give them things that they are less, or that is less of what they know, they become boring and they won't learn. After all, they know it already and you are dumping it onto them. That is why when I was teaching and we got to a point, I told you we did it in EDC 241. There wouldn't be the need for me to what, emphasize it again. So I skipped. If I go on board, you have learned already. And I'm going to repeat it so it will look boring, uninterested, or uninterested when it comes to you learning it. We cannot talk about child development without hitting on Eric Erickson's theory. This theory was discussed in some of your courses, specifically systems and theories. Systems and theories. Erickson mm -hmm. is a disciple of Sigmund Freud. He developed a social, psychosocial mm -hmm. theory. Psychosocial yes, theory. Glorin, Glorin Danzo, Glorin Danzo, you are making the class unconducive. Glorin Danzo, you are making the class unconducive. Oh, yeah. Wisdom, you and your you and your sugar mommy, I hate it. Mute yourself. Wisdom, mute yourself. You and your sugar mommy. Florin Danzo, mute yourself. Manuela, mute yourself. Manuela, mute yourself. Wisdom, mute yourself. Otherwise, I will delete you. Wisdom, mute yourself. Else, I will delete you. All right. Erickson learned under Sigmund Freud, who proposed a psychoanalytic theory, specifically psychosexual theory. Sigmund Freud said that whatever that you learn in your early life, it remains with you till you die. And that brought a confusion between him and the disciple Eric Erickson. So Erickson said that if society gives you the opportunity, you can rewrite your story, regardless of what you experienced when you were young. So he believed that. The course of development can be reversed such that events of later childhood can be undone or we can undo them when we are given the opportunity in our society. Based on that, he tagged or he labeled the theory psychosocial, psychosocial. So it is emphasized that the social and cultural aspect of our life influence the way and manner we grow. For Erickson, there are three major aspects of human development. We have the somatic, we have the personal, and we have the social. 
three major aspects of human development, somatic, personal, and social. And each one are, is having mm -hmm. a meaning. With the physical, it's about what? Uh, with the social, it's about the cultural, history, environmental factors that influences our growth and development. With the personal, you individualize convictions, your current development and history in your own life, and somatic, your physical appearance, strengths, and weaknesses. We equally have the stages of psychosocial development proposed by Eric Erickson. We have the trust and mistrust. Every child born into the environment trusts the parents. And they think that whatever that they are doing, if you are present, they don't have any problem. But if by mistake, you, the parent, make a mistake, and they fall, they develop a sense of fear, and they feel like, like the world is not what good. They don't have any sense of hope in their lives. So it is very important for you, the parents, you, the teachers, to have in mind that if you are teaching, let the students have trust in you. Don't let them have a mistrust in you. If you do the right thing and they know, they will build on it. But if you do the wrong thing and go to intimidate, they may fear you all the time. And some of you are experiencing it as we are teaching you currently. But that you can't talk about it. It's only a few who can boldly come and say, say this, we don't want it. We want it this way. And we take it on and go on board. But how many lectures can you even get close to? Similar things will happen in the senior high when you go there, either to teach history, economics, geography. So have that in mind. The more they have trust in you, the more they develop. The more they have no trust in the system they find themselves, the less they develop. Have that in mind. The second stage is the autonomy versus shape and doubt. At the age here, the child tries to do things on their own. So let's say, as I'm teaching you, assuming you were within this particular age, then you try to tell me what I'm supposed to do. I don't mind you. Then before I get to the class, then you have already taught what I was coming to teach. It's autonomy. But if you do it wrong, I need to guide you and let you do the right thing. I'm not, I need not what rebuff or rubbish your views. The moment you let the person feel like he has not done anything important, based on his own conviction and personal volition, the person feel like they are ashamed of themselves and they feel doubtful about their future. So children wouldn't want to be like that. You give birth to them at the age of one to three, they go into the washroom, pour every water onto themselves, go to the room and pour the pomade onto themselves, go to the room, pour the whole powder onto themselves. You don't shame. If you shame them, they will have less sense of what? Competence. Less sense of competence. So give them autonomy. Let them wear their panties themselves and you guide them. If they make mistakes, you don't insult, you don't shame. The more you shame, the more doubtful they become. But provide them opportunities to become autonomous in their lives as they develop. The third stage is initiative versus guilt. Initiative versus guilt. Over here, the child would want to do things by starting new things. As they start the new thing, it is accompanied by or uh, with energy. And they may think that they are doing it on their own. Yes, it's a new thing they've started. Homework, they are giving them. They come home. Before I realize they've already gone to do the homework without telling you. And they did it wrongly. Spoil the pencil. Spoil what? The, uh, the pen. You come as a parent, you are angry. The moment you tell them something wrong about what they did, when you need to say that's what you say, they will feel guilty of their actions. Once they feel guilty of their actions, you go against their sense of initiation. They can't start anything new in their lives. They will always wait for you to come before they do anything in their lives. So whenever you see you're just starting something new, you look at it and try to guide so that the child will not feel like they are guilty of their actions. Any question? Any question concern clarification? You can raise your hand. I'll call upon you. You ask your question. I'll give you the best of answers. Thank you very much. Any question? Okay, the lights are on. 
Unmute yourself and ask your question. Delight, unmute yourself and ask your question, please. Step, this is a mistake. It's a mistake. Okay. Yes, Thank you very much. Who else has a question? Who else has a question? No one has a question. All right, let's continue with our lecture. We move to the fourth stage. The fourth stage is industry versus inferiority. Over here, it's a build up on the fourth stage, at the third stage. At the age of six to 12, the child needs to be industrial and be thinking about the kind of occupation that they want to be. If they are girls, they would want to be like mothers and be doing the work that mothers do at home. If they are boys, they would want to be doing things that men do at home. So let's put the girls in this picture. Your mother went to the market and came home late. When the mother got home, she saw that you have prepared soup and the soup you prepared, it was granules. You never grinded it. You pour into the water, you pour pepper, everything there, and you could see the granite flying on top of the water. As a mother, that was the last ingredient that they had in the fridge. What you're supposed to do is that you catch your daughter, sit her down, and teach her. If you don't, and you tell the ah, say, say, or what we wanted to eat for today is what we have just bought. What else can we do? We are going to sleep hunger. The moment you say that, when you when you're 15, you're well more bra, a wire bra, and that, giving those descriptions, and you couldn't cook common soup, you couldn't make common rice, you couldn't uh, cook. The moment you said they feel inferior, they feel like they are non entity in your life, and they wouldn't even venture anything that are occupational related because they wouldn't know what will happen. But the moment they make the mistake and you support them and guide them rightly, they feel like, yeah, okay, next time when I'm preparing granola soup, I need to grind the gran the granite first. I need to do this, do this, and that. And they'll continue to be doing it. So have that in mind. So failure to create that particular image as a woman for themselves, let the child feel like they are inadequate. And it can go against their future prospects. It can go against their future prospects. According to Eric Erickson, the first four stages, the individual child depends on the immediate family. So basic trust and mistrust, autonomy versus shame. Autonomy versus shame. We have industry versus initiative versus girls and industry versus inferiority. The first four stages, the child don't need anyone in their life except the family members whom they live with and the school that they attend. But when they leave the fourth stage and enter identity versus role confusion, the whole society is part of the development of the child. We all have a role to play. Over here, they need to identify themselves as men, identify themselves as female or women, and know the role of a man and the role of a female or a woman. If they are unable to know their roles as women and men, it go against them. Over here, you will see a boy behaving like a male, a female, and you see a female behave, behaving like a male. It's because they don't know who they are. It's because they don't know who they are. And according to Eric Erickson, we need to allow them to explore their environment through psychosocial moratorium. Psychosocial moratorium. Moratorium is M O. R A T O R I U M psychosocial moratorium. That is how it means. You allow the child to explore other identities, to fine tune their wrong identity that they pick. So someone may be there, always attending one particular, uh, so several churches, but the person is supposed to be in Pentecost, later day saint, deeper life, or a particular church that you choose. But they don't know, and they choose to go all. So you allow the child to explore all, and they'll identify a particular church that will befit their thinking, their perception, their view. That is what we term as psychosocial moratorium. The next stage is intimacy versus isolation. At this stage, 
the child must be able to understand the self and create new relationship with the opposite sex. As we are talking, I'm too close with most of you. I'm too close with most of you. And it is normal that you should be close to the opposite sex, whether male or female. Why must you do that? So that when you are growing, you will see good in the other opposite sex and not bad in the other opposite sex. That is the view of Eric Erickson. So once you see good in the person, it means it helps. It means you understand and you all go together as individuals. But if you don't see good in the person, you don't cherish the other person, you don't engage them in any act, you grow and become isolated. I'm coming up. Which has a replication in your future life. But the moment some of you will see some people go in the opposite sex, you have several descriptions and it is normal. You will give several meanings and it is normal. So have that in mind. Let them mingle with the opposite sex so that they will appreciate the opposite sex and move with them. We have generativity versus, uh, uh, what do you call it? Stagnation. Generativity versus stagnation. What generativity stagnation says is that you as an individual between the ages of 35 to 55, you should be someone that can take care of others. So let me put myself in this picture. There are several individuals I'm taking care of. I don't get anything from them, but it's because I think I must help. Because I could see that the person is suffering. But then, if you are unable to do that, you become self-absorbed. You feel like there's something that you don't even need, that you don't even have, which is going against the full makeup of you as an individual. So it's so important that you should be able to plan your life very well in a way that at this stage, you can help someone and help the person very good. Under the stage of seven or the stage seven, not all of us can do it. If you are able to do that, you develop a sense of care. You develop a sense of care. But if you are unable to do that, you have an issue. We have the last stage, integrity versus despair. Over here, you look around your life and value or evaluate it totally and see whether you have made it in life or not. Do you have defects in life or not? You ask yourself. If you look back at the age of 55, and you don't have anything to it, it means you have issues. It means you have things that you have not done. And some people may think that they are dejected or they may think that they are worthless in their lives and it go against us. So you see many people in our societies who have attained the age of 55 and above, yet they don't have anything. And they feel like they are people who came to the world, but they are cursed. They are not cursed. But that is their feeling. They can rewrite their story. They can rewrite their story. Among the eight stages, according to Erickson, we have crisis. So if you get to one stage and you are not able to solve the problem with the stage, you don't remain there. Once you are aging, you move to the next one. But you can come back and solve the problems of the earlier stages that you couldn't solve, which we term as frustration regression. Frustration regression. So you come back and work on them as you grow at the later stage in life. So if you are 55 and above and you don't have anything in your life, it doesn't mean that you cannot make it. Redesign your life and think about things that you did wrong and work on yourself. You shall be able to work out and make it in life. And that is the hope you must put in the world of the child. Any question? Clarification? Concern? So as teachers, we need to avoid the development of God and infrating children. Don't let them feel guilty in their lives. You must encourage them. And when they attempt to take any good initiative, guide them and let them do the right thing. Encourage group activities so that they will learn from their own friends. And you, the teacher, again, should be able to use the discovery instructional method and capitalize on the teachable moment so that the learner will learn and get the best of the life that he or she has chosen for himself. Don't remain in your comfort zone and think that the learner is a magician, they can get their best. No, it's not done. You must provide those opportunities so that they can reach their full potential as individuals, according to Eric Erickson. You are the key societal figure. No one else. You, the teacher, aside the parent, you are the one that complements the life of the child. So let's be serious and go by this and get our young ones 
to get the best in their lives. Thank you very much. Questions are welcome just for four minutes, after which we can end our class. Thank you very much. I'm waiting for the questions. Raise your hand, ask your question, and I'll answer. Yeah, please, who is that number one? Ask your question, number one. Your hand is up. Unmute yourself. Yeah, question. Yes. Hello, hello, yeah. Doug. Yes, please, Michael. Doug. Michael. Uh -huh. Doug, uh, Doug, please, uh, according to you, you said when the person overcomes the stage yeah. and still return back to correct he himself, yeah. please, you call it frustration or maybe the name that you have called for is it frustration or what? Frustration regression. When, instead of you to be at higher, you are coming back to the lower. It's frustration regression. And you need to address it. Please, frustration. Is it frustration? Frustration. Frustration. When you oh, are okay, okay, okay. I will type it as a message and place on our chat box. Oh, okay, Doug. Thank you very much. You are most welcome. Any other concern? Questions should come. Each one will ask a question here today, whether you like it or not, but we don't have much minutes. We'll soon end the class and we'll move. I'm giving the meaning, uh, what do you call it? The statement. Yeah. That's frustration regression. So you can Doc. take it from there. Doc. Yes, please. Uh, Alex. This is Alex. Yes. Yeah. It's a little unfortunate. Uh, we are not getting a lot of information. But, uh, okay. Uh, but uh, the stages that you are talking about, the tracks, MS tracks, autonomy, yeah. uh, I have not gotten the uh, explanation that is initiative versus skill. I didn't get okay. it clear. Uh, when we say initiative, when they start something new in their lives, they need to be supported. Hello, hello. hello can you hear me? When you say initiative, something hello, new hello. the child has started in life. Can you hear me, Alex? Alex, can you hear me? Initiative is something new, something you are not Hello, aware of as a parent. While the child has started. All right. Wisdom. Hello. Uh, can you hear me, Alex? Let me give another link, then we ask the questions there, OK? Um, all of you, wait on. I'll give another link. I'll give you another link. You join and ask your questions. But I'm going to save this particular lecture and we'll take it up from there. So a link will come any moment now. Again, you join that one. Thank you very much. <laughs>